Day four, and the morning session was meant to be a slightly less intense one compared to the previous days, and we used the incline-decline synthetic track facility in the grounds of the stadium. We began with the stationary leg cycling drills, where there are three variations. I learned these from a Soviet coach many years ago and they're great for replicating the running action. These exercises also have a preconditioning function, particularly in regard to the hamstrings. Next up, we used the downgrade to perform some calf drills and then calf drills with a thigh pod, working just on one side of the body at a time, lifting the leg to parallel and then driving it down forcibly into the track surface. Here Paul's performing an alternate leg version, so left, right, left, right. Using the downgrade facilitated foot speed and required less effort to be put in on the part of the athlete to generate speed. Next up we performed some running drills with hands on the hips. The idea being that you need to focus fully on the leg cycling movement. To switch it up a bit, we then performed a couple of reps uphill and then returned to going down the grade. This therefore facilitated foot contact speed. When performing these drills, it's key to keep the toes up and to keep lifting the heels in that cyclical motion. We finished the session with some downhill runs. The idea being to accelerate quickly and then hold speed. Do note, this session was not designed for maximum output. Therefore, the athletes weren't trying to sprint over speed, as may be the case with downhill running. At the end of the workout, a good stretch and warm down was performed. As on day three, we returned to the track four hours later for our second session of the day. This was a strength and conditioning one and specifically involved weights. For this session, I took a back seat and allowed Jonathan to lead it. He's been training with Performance Ground in London, specifically for his strength and conditioning workouts. So here, he's taken the guys through a specific warming up process. This comprised of various stretches, and functional movements. The various exercises were performed in three sets continuously and this proved to be quite tough for the guys who were not used to this type of warm-up. After the warm-up it was into the gym for a complex training session. A complex or contrast workout involves combining weights exercises with plyometric or jumping exercises into sets. Combination is believed to heighten the response of the athlete's fast twitch motor units and the ability to recruit greater numbers of fast twitch fibre. Generally, Contrast or complex workouts are performed with heavy weights, i.e. above 80% of one repetition maximum. It's important to keep recoveries long so that you can put maximum effort into each lift and jumping exercise. This last exercise is designed to assist the transition into the takeoff. 
The workout was completed with some abdominal exercises. On day five, we're planning to do just one session, so hopefully the athletes will recover from the last couple of days of training and be able to build up with some intense sessions towards the end of the week.